we're going to be proving the triangle angle sum theorem, that the angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. Before you can do this proof, some geometry is needed. We'll go over that now. First, you need to know about parallel lines. Parallel lines never cross, and they're always equal distance from each other. The red segments between these two white lines show that the lines are equidistant from each other. But look at these ones. You can tell the segments are not the same length. You also need to know about congruent angles. Congruent angles are the same size. If you're measuring them, you put an M in front of the angle sign. On the left, you see two congruent angles. Angle B is congruent to angle C. Also, the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle C. It looks like 90 degrees. When we talk about the measure of an angle, we're talking about the actual degrees. On the right, you see two angles that are not congruent, angle X and angle Y. Angle X is not congruent to angle Y, and the measure of angle X is not equal to the measure of angle Y. You also need to know about Euclid's parallel postulate. Now really, all that says is that if we have a line and a point that's not on that line, there is only one line that we can draw through that point that is parallel to the original line. Let's illustrate this with a line and a point not on the line. There's only one line we can draw through it that's parallel. Any other line won't work. You also need to know what a transversal is. It's just a line that intersects two or more parallel lines. This transversal is intersecting two parallel lines. So if we take that transversal and the parallel lines it's intersecting, it creates angles. Corresponding angles are angles that are situated in the same way with those two parallel lines. Let's take a look at this. So we have our two white parallel lines and we also have the transversal. Now if we look at angle 2 and angle 6, notice it's on top of the parallel line connected to the transversal. These are corresponding angles. And angle 1 and angle 5 are also corresponding angles. Because of this, the pairs are congruent. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. You also need to know about vertical angles. Vertical angles are just opposite angles across from each other. Like in the picture, the yellow and the yellow are vertical angles, as are the red and the red. Knowing about vertical angles can help us with new angles created by the parallel lines and the transversal. These are alternate interior angles, angles on the inside of parallel lines and on the opposite sides. Take a look at angle 5. Angle 5 is a corresponding angle with angle 1. Now look at angle 5 again in the blue. Notice it is a vertical angle to angle 4. Thus, angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent angles. They're also what's called alternate interior angles. They're on the inside of the parallel lines. Now take a look at angle 6. Angle 6 is a corresponding angle with angle 2. They're congruent. Angle 6 is also a vertical angle with angle 3. So angle 3 and angle 2, those are alternate interior angles as well. Now, I drew another transversal on the right. This transversal has the same thing happening. You can see the alternate interior angles in green on the inside of the parallel lines and in orange. Now there are other angles that are congruent, but really we're only looking at the alternate interior angles for this particular proof. You also need to know about substitution. If you have two variables that equal the same amount, you can substitute one for the other. For example, if x is equal to z and y is equal to z, then I can replace x with y and y with x. x and y are equal. The last piece of information you need to know about is the angle addition postulate. Really that says that if we have two angles and we put them together so they share a side, it's the same measure as the two small angles added up together. So the large angle equals the sum of the two smaller angles. 
So if we look at this picture, we've got angle 4, angle 3, and angle 5. Now, we can add them all together, angle 4 plus angle 3 plus angle 5, and it equals the sum of the three angles. So when we add all of those angles together, it's the sum of the larger purple angle. So we're given that we have a triangle, and we want to prove that the angles add up to 180 degrees. Now before we start doing statements and reasons and formal things like that, we really want to think about it. So how are we going to show that those angles are 180 degrees? Well, another piece of information that we know is that a straight line also is 180 degrees. So if we can show all of the angles form a straight angle by the angle addition postulate, then we will be able to prove this. Let's review some of the background information that we will use to prove that the sum of the angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. The first piece of information is Euclid's parallel postulate. That's going to give us the line that we'll need to line up the angles with. Alternate interior angles theorem. That tells us that inside parallel lines, the two inside opposite angles are congruent. Definition of congruent angles. That tells us that congruent angles have the same measure. Their measures are equal. Definition of a straight angle. A straight angle is equal to 180 degrees. The angle addition postulate tells us that if we find the measure of two smaller angles and put them together so they share a side, it equals the measure of the larger angle. And we can substitute one variable for the other as long as they're equal. Okay, so let's start with our triangle. Let's go ahead and label it with sides A, B, and C. And then let's go ahead and draw a line that's parallel to AB through C. That's Euclid's parallel postulate. That's the reason we can do that. Now, let's go ahead and extend AC so that it looks like a transversal that it is. Now we can recognize that we have interior angles that are congruent. Angle A and that angle over by C are alternate interior angles. We can also extend the other side of the triangle to recognize the transversal, and we have more alternate interior angles that are congruent that we mark in green. Now if we look at what we've got, we actually have a straight line with angles that are congruent to both A and B. Then we can prove that's 180 degrees. Now I think we're ready for the formal proof. Given any triangle ABC, prove that all the angles are 180 degrees. So we know we have a triangle, ABC, that goes in statements. And the reason we know that is that it was given to us. That was our first piece of information. So next, remember, we want to draw that line. And they call it an auxiliary line if it's not part of the original diagram. We can draw that because of Euclid's parallel postulate. Then we're going to go ahead and label the angles. That just helps us keep track of them. And the reason we can do that is the definition of angles. It is in between two rays at a vertex. Now we know those angles are congruent. And look, we did it both with the red and with the green. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And angle 2 is congruent to angle 5 by the alternate interior angles congruence theorem. Now we have to say that the measure of them are equal because remember we want them to equal 180 degrees and when we're talking about actual measurement we use the little m to indicate measurement. So we know the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 4 and the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 5. Now when we add them all together 4, 3, and 5 we know it's 180 degrees and we know it's 180 degrees because that's a straight line and we drew that line with Euclid's parallel postulate. But we're not really interested in angle 4, angle 5, and angle 3 equaling 180 degrees. We're really interested in angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3 equaling 180 degrees. This is where substitution comes into play. We know that angle 1 is the same as angle 4, and we know that angle 2 is the same as angle 5. So we can substitute in angle 1 for angle 4, and we can substitute in angle 2 for angle 5. Now we have angle 1, angle 3, and angle 2 all adding up to 180 degrees. So we've proved that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees.